Well, life insurance costs too much. It does. It costs your arm and leg, won't it? Whole life insurance is way too expensive. Oh, yes, precious. Way too much. That's just business. Whoa, 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 guys. Don't you put all of your money in banks? Hello and welcome to the Durham Talents Channel. My name is Jesse Durham. For today's installation in our Myths, Mysteries, and Misconceptions series, we're going to consider and evaluate this saying of whole life insurance costs too much or whole life insurance premiums are too high. Now, on this particular aspect of cost, I, I really just want to say that cost is in the eye of the beholder. I mean, there is this thing such as supply and demand when something is in demand, it has a cost to it, right? And I also want to ask a question that Nelson, Nelson from the Becoming Your Own Banker book, Nelson, the inventor of this idea of infinite banking, of becoming your own banker, he would often ask this question of compared to what? So when you say something is expensive, compared to what is a ribeye steak? expensive compared to ground beef? Perhaps so, but that's relative to the product itself. So I've already covered in other areas the differences between whole life insurance versus term insurance, for example, on this channel and in this particular playlist of the myths, mysteries, and misconceptions. So I would encourage you to check out the other episodes where I'm tackling these myths that we hear from term insurance companies or Dave Ramsey or Susie Orman and these other highly touted degradations against whole life insurance. So cost, I think, is in the eye of the beholder. Now, let me use an analogy I like using stories and analogies, and this one stuck out to me some while back. Let's look in vehicles, because whole life insurance is a financial vehicle, but let's look at motor vehicles for an analogy. A Prius and a Peterbilt 18-wheeler truck are both motor vehicles, but they are built for very different purposes, aren't they? And yet solely on the topic of cost, which one costs more? Of course, you know that the Peterbilt truck costs more. And it performs a completely different task, even though they are both motor vehicles. I look at, because most time when people are saying whole life insurance costs too much, and I'm trying to focus there. I'm not necessarily trying to get into the term versus whole life insurance at this point. I've done that in other episodes, but I'm trying to talk about the cost. The Prius and the Peterbilt are both vehicles, motor vehicles. They have a different cost and they perform different jobs, different roles, different tasks. They're literally built. They're made for different purposes. And can you say that whole life insurance costs more than other types of insurance? Y you can. That is true at times. Now, for those that are looking to implement infinite banking, and we're going to use a properly structured whole life policy from a mutual company that pays dividends as the ideal entity, you're the one who picks the premiums. I'd like to point that out right out of the gate. You're the one that picks the premiums. So when you say a whole life insurance policy costs too much, it's not so for infinite banking purposes. It's not like you're going to a vending machine and pushing the button that leads to the costliest product. No, that's not the case. You should be picking what amount of premium you deem is appropriate for you. And then that's what you're going to be paying to begin and maintain and run your private banking system. So how can it cost too much if you're the one who's picking the premium that's going into that? And again, I like going all the way back to look at the product itself. Let's actually look at the product itself. A whole life insurance policy has a guaranteed 
level premium, meaning that now I get to choose that premium that I'm going to pay and it is not going to change. I'm not going to get to my 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, past 100 and have that insurance call me up or uh, send me mail saying, well, you actually have to pay this amount more because this has changed. No, it's a guaranteed level premium for that policy. And I picked that number. What else is guaranteed to give a value to the cost that's merited in this entity. It's got a guaranteed death benefit, not for 10 years. Do I have this? Not for 20, not for 30 years. I have a guaranteed death benefit with a whole life insurance policy. A whole life insurance policy has a cash value because it is a permanent, it is a whole life contract. It has a value and that value increases on the policy over time because inherently with a whole life insurance policy, the cash value must eventually equal whatever that death benefit amount is. And that's why I don't like to diminish the value of a death benefit. I believe that everyone should have adequate protection, and that means adequate death benefit. The cash value must eventually equal what that death benefit is. So I believe everyone should have an adequate amount of protection and coverage but what else is guaranteed? Okay, so I get to have access to leverage that cash value that is a compounding pool of capital that I have access to over my whole lifetime. And that number is eventually going to equal whatever that death benefit is. And oh, by the way, if it's with a mutual life insurance company, one of the guarantees is, is that if and when I earn a dividend, and a dividend is not guaranteed. Once it's paid to you, it is guaranteed. And all the insurance companies that I own policies with or that I would write insurance with have paid a dividend consecutively for 100 years without missing a single year. So it's a good track record. When you do earn that dividend, it also gets to contribute to that growing compounding pool of capital that I get to leverage for my whole lifetime. Those are substantial guarantees. You mean I can guarantee a compounding pool of capital that I have tax-free access to over my whole life, and I can facilitate a income tax-free windfall to my heirs or beneficiaries? Also, both of those? Yes, please. Another please. More please. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. So there's cost. Because there's value. And again, you're the one who's determining the cost. When you recognize that it's your premiums that you choose that build this entity. Now let's get down to the process for a minute. We've talked some about the product. Let's talk about the process. That's a legitimate question that I asked at the intro of this video. How much of your cash flow goes into a commercial bank? What's the percentage? I'm not, I'm not asking about the dollar amount. That's your business. How much, though, percentage-wise, of your cash flow goes into a commercial bank? Or don't you have it directly deposited there? Okay. So you're telling me that you're committing 100% or close to it of your cash flow, your gross cash flows, to someone else's business? Okay. Oh, Wow. 100% of your cash flows into someone else's business. Let's talk about that business. What are banks earning on our money that we put there? 400%, 800%, 1,200% or more. These banks are making multiples of our money that we put there by putting it in motion because we gave them access to it. So we don't question conventionally. We're never told to question banking. We're told to buy term and invest the difference. We're told to put your money into these government qualified plans. We're told to do this, do that, do the other. Okay. And we don't even question where we're putting our capital. Well, see, R. Nelson Nash in his second book, Building Your Warehouse of Wealth, said, and listen to that title, Warehouse of Wealth. Where are you warehousing your wealth? You're putting it in someone else's business if you're using commercial banks. Okay, I'm thinking we should question that. And once you do recognize that capital must reside somewhere, it must reside somewhere. Under the mattress, hole in the ground, CDs, investments, real estate, government qualified plans, wherever. I'm not telling you where to put it. I'm not giving investment advice. 
I'm saying, where are you going to warehouse your wealth? You could, you could use a properly structured whole life policy from a mutual company that pays dividends because you own it. You control it. And because you have access to it, you can profit from the use of that capital. So where do you warehouse your wealth? Would you like to control it? Would you like to own it? Would you like to be the one who maintains access to your capital, not foregoing being able to access it for the next 20, 30, 40 years until you're 59 and a half, but what if you could have access to it now and use that capital for your need of finance, your vacations, your taxes, your dental work, your medications, your business equipment, your child's college, your cars, your appliances, things you're already doing anyway, you could consider getting one of these expensive whole life policies and you wouldn't have to work any harder. You wouldn't have to lose control. You wouldn't have to take on any additional risk. You wouldn't have to change your cash flows. You could really just add one step to what you're already doing. And by owning this kind of an asset and using it the way it's described in Nelson's book, you could add that one step to what you're already doing. Do those things that you're doing in life or going to do anyway and keep the money because you're the banker. You own it. You control it. You profit from it. Banks are making bank. We need to understand this business and we need to understand that we don't have to be beholden to the banks have to ask permission for access to capital if we qualify, pay them interest, etc. We could proactively decide, well, okay, wealth must reside somewhere. Everything is finance, and I'd like to be the one that controls it and profits from it. And we could determine what's a reasonable amount of premium for us to begin this process or perpetuate this process. I've personally implemented this concept for going on a decade now on several policies. We've built a private family banking system out of these policies, and we've used our private family banking system for vacations and property taxes, business equipment, real estate deals, all kinds of stuff. And I help people all across the country do the exact same thing. So if you've not yet seen my free introductory presentation video on infinite banking, make sure to check that out. And you can book a free consultation call with me all from DurhamTalents.com. This has been a great pleasure with me to address this myth about whole life insurance being too costly or premiums being too high. My name is Jesse Durham. Teach people how to live and leave a lasting legacy. Have a great day. Take care.